Look, I'm sorry I need to be the one to tell you this, but ChatGPT is making you a terrible developer. Let's talk about it. Team, welcome to the channel where we talk about tips, insights, and actionable things that you can do all around the engineering community. I've been a senior software engineer for over a decade, and yes, I still write code on a day-to-day -day basis. Today, we are going to address the elephant in the room, or ChatGPT, and we now know this as the revolutionary tool, the tool of the future, the tool you must be using if you want to be successful, but it might be making you a legitimately terrible developer. Let's dive into three sections, the bad, the good, and what I think might be the solution to this ChatGPT pandemic that I think we're in. So let's dive into the bad. Now, before you absolutely exile me or write me off as a ChatGPT Karen, I promise you, one, I'm not, and two, I still use ChatGPT every single day, but as a leader with over a decade of experience in the space, here are a couple patterns that I'm noticing that I truly think might be destroying your ability as a new engineer. So here they are. One, copy and paste confusion. Now. Let me tell you a story. Back in college, and truthfully, probably one of my most humiliating moments as a student, I had a class where we needed to write a simple shell script to do some kind of recursive function and, you know, you move on. Myself, along with probably 80 or 90% of the rest of the classroom, all got our answers off Stack Overflow. We, sh <laughs> we shared answers with one another. We just changed the variables, but largely it was the same code. It didn't take ChatGPT for my professor to realize we all just turned in the same answer. So we all walk into the classroom the next day thinking, how Jolly jolly, I did uh, the assignment and I'm going to get an A to be surprised with the pop quiz where he gave us back our answers and said, give me the pseudocode for every single line that you submitted. <laughs> Quick tip, if you're not in the engineering field, the pseudocode is just the human readable format of the code you've written, uh, not some functional programming language kind of thing. So don't worry about it. Just know that it is basically the, the human version of what the actual logic is saying it should be doing. And I'm sure you could have guessed it, but I got a big fat zero on that pop quiz because I had no clue what the hell my code did. I turned in a pop quiz that said I cheated and I got the answer on Stack Overflow. So pulling this back into modern day, I am consistently seeing new engineers copy and paste code out of ChatGPT, see that it works and walking away. And I know for a fact that they're walking away because I see their pull requests or their code reviews full of replace me type comments that ChatGPT leaves all throughout its responses, which truthfully isn't the end of the world, but it tells me one of two things. Either you're not reviewing your code before you turn it in, or you just don't care. And let me give you a hot take. Your code is only going to be as good as your prompt is. I promise you that. So all of that to say, go ahead and use ChatGPT. Gain the efficiencies and the collaboration co-pilot mechanisms that you can get out of ChatGPT, but at least understand what the hell you're copying into the baseline. If you have to ask ChatGPT to explain it to you, I promise you will be far better off to understand what ChatGPT is giving you than just blindly copy pasting and walking away. Oh my God. I get it. The last thing you wanna do is get absolutely gut checked by your technical lead or one of your bosses to ask you, hey, explain me what this code does or explain me how you achieve this. And you have to say, uh, I cheated because I copy and pasted ChatGPT. Learn from my mistakes. It sucks to get gut checked and you don't want to just blindly copy and, and walk away. One of the next failures I'm seeing here in, in the next bad patterns is what I'm calling real world integration. Real world integration is things like debugging, profiling, hands-on problem solving that you are not going to get by asking ChatGPT. You might find yourself on an old legacy spaghetti monster project where you won't be able to put all of the code into ChatGPT to start asking questions. Hey, I'm experiencing this. What I mean is you might have something triggering up here, but the real problem is down here. And you very, very likely will not be able to make that type of correlation with just sending ChatGPT a little code snippet. Could you imagine a world where you bring your car into the mechanic and you say, it's making this really weird sound and I don't know how to explain it. You know, it's going boom, boom, bat, boom, bat. And the mechanic comes back and says, hang, hang on, let me go back inside real quick and chat GPT, boom, bat, boom, bat, boom, bat, and see what chat GPT thinks the problem is. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? You would instantly bounce and take your car down the road to the next mechanic and say, hey, I got a boom, bat, boom, bat, please help. <laughs> You are not gonna trust the car mechanic who is just saying, let me chat GPT this for you. What I mean is just like profiling or learning on how to work with legacy baselines or debugging the code, you will only gain experience by 
pulling it apart, breaking shit, and learning how to fix it. And to put emphasis here, if you're working on a system that is comprised of legacy microservices and this bug only happens in one random edge case because a thread has weaved through the microservices, you're gonna spend three weeks trying to cleverly come up with a prompt and paste the right snippets of code to debug a system where it only occurred when the product was actually being used. Don't be afraid to dive head first attach a debugger, add a ton of print statements like everybody else, and actually get your hands dirty to figure out what the heck is going on. All right, I've ripped on ChatGPT enough. Let's talk about the good. ChatGPT can be really great because of collaboration and adaptive learning. We get it, working in a vacuum absolutely freaking sucks. And I'm not talking about being alone on some deserted island with some quiet time, and perhaps it would be even better if it was a Mr. Beast island. I bought this entire island. And you got to keep it afterwards. But depending on where you work, and what projects you're working on, being on an island might actually be a reality for you. You might find yourself in environments where you don't have many of your peers that you can talk to, or you know, if you are a front-end developer and you have a back-end question, your other front-end developers might not know the answer. So this is where ChatGPT can be a holy grail for you. You see, we have apps like Duolingo for learning speaking languages and ChatGPT for learning programming languages. And we're not gonna dive in this video on how to set ChatGPT up to help be your programming assistant, but drop a comment down below if you want me to make a video on that. It just seems that there are lots of other videos already teaching you that, but I'm happy to throw another one in the ring. And yeah, I totally understand that this might be a controversial thing that I'm saying, because while ChatGPT can cause copy and paste confusion, it can also be the answer. You know, as I mentioned before, rather than blindly copy and pasting and roger that walking away, at least do your due diligence to ask ChatGPT, please explain what the hell I just copied. Because if you do not know, I promise you, you are going to get gut checked at some point along your journey. You will thank yourself later. So the second good thing about ChatGPT is prototyping. And I left this one last because it is probably hands down the most beneficial thing that I find in my day-to-day -day work style using ChatGPT. Prototyping or scaffolding out a new project is an amazing thing to get ChatGPT to do all of the grunt work for you. And rather than spend eight plus hours trying to cobble some solution together that might not work. Throw an hour at ChatGPT to cobble that same solution together and get your prototyping done quicker and more efficiently. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Hell, in the advanced versions of ChatGPT, I've literally drawn a picture of what I want a user interface to look like on paper, fed it to ChatGPT, and it created it flawlessly. It wrote the code, it tested the code, but more on this in a future video. When you are prototyping something, it really sucks when you get all the way to the end and it just doesn't work. It sucks a little less when ChatGPT did all of the heavy lifting for you. So we've talked about some of the bad, we've talked about some of the good. Now let's talk about what I think might be a solution on how we keep the good and get rid of the bad. Largely, just like other things, you can't blame the tool for being the problem. It is always a cultural problem. And, and I fully admit, even as a senior engineer, the problem that we are facing for new engineers is not that ChatGPT is bad or that new engineers are lazy. The problem is leaders setting expectations that are just completely unrealistic for young or new engineers to solve in time, which then forces them to get into ChatGPT mayhem. Supposedly, across the industry, it takes six months to onboard a new or young engineer onto a project, but in today's world, you're expected to be producing after two weeks. How does I just don't think that adds up. And I think that is a huge contributing factor to why this cultural problem of ChatGPT is going to just get worse and worse unless the leaders stand up and do something about this. So here's my call to all of you leaders out there, including myself, as I do lead teams of new and young engineers. We need to do better. Something that I'm actively working on with all of my teams is setting up a more realistic onboarding timeline so that our new colleagues can onboard and acclimate to the project rather than just throwing them in the deep end and saying, Good luck. And, and I'm doing this by flat out stopping, expecting young or new engineers to complete as many story points as the senior engineers on your team in a given sprint. Instead, you should be encouraging questions, encouraging them to make mistakes, to get their hands dirty and try to figure things out. And really promoting that culture that failure is just another opportunity to try again. So that's it. That is the bad, the good, and hopefully the start of a solution for this ChatGPT pandemic as our new and young engineers 
are facing some insurmountable pressure from leadership, from senior engineers, and from the culture that I think senior engineers are creating. And this is just the beginning of our journey together. If you got value out of what I said, if you liked what I said, or if you just totally disagreed, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Oh, and if you're interested in some of the things I had to say or following along with future conversations, insights that I'm going through, tips and tricks, Q&A, check out my Substack linked down beneath the subscribe button where I release a new article every Sunday. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you next week. Peace.